and I could just make out in one of the photos, I could just make out the side of a Rockwell 6x48 stationary belt sander. And a lot of what he had there initially looked like woodworking tools, but when I called him, the guy explained the situation to me. He said, he's 78 years old, he's got a workshop, chuck full of stuff, a lot of the stuff is his, a lot of the stuff is stuff he's just accumulated over the years, and... Uh, he needs to get rid of some stuff. He didn't have prices on anything, and he said, really, he's just going to... He kind of led me to believe that he was going to be very reasonable on prices um, and said that, you know, he really didn't know what a lot of the stuff should sell for now, but that, you know, he'd be willing to uh, entertain offers. So I figured I'd take a, take a ride out. I told him, I said, look, I tell you what. I said, I'll, I'll give you a offers on stuff and if you don't even want to accept the offer right on the spot that's fine you could you know check back with me in a couple of days try and put his mind at ease because he seemed like he was kind of worried that he might be giving the stuff away too cheap well it's kind of funny that he would say that because then when i get out there like i look at the stationary sander first thing i notice is he has not one not just one but two of them <laughs> identical and they were both just 6x48 belt sanders. They weren't the combination belt disc sander, which uh, you guys who follow my videos regularly know that I picked up one that needs repair and has some parts missing that I'm going to be uh, reworking. Well, my whole thought was if I could get a really good deal on one in complete condition working, then I would buy that one and then I would either part out mine or fix it up and sell it. Well, uh... What ended up happening was when I got out there, first thing I realized was it was a strictly a belt sander. It wasn't a belt disc combination machine like mine. So it's not worth as much as mine is, uh, you know, if they were both in equal condition. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, if I can buy it right, I'd still maybe buy one of these, take one of these off his hands, and just have a different sized... Uh, different grit belt on it you know and keep keep both of them so i said well what are you thinking for the the belt sander he reaches into his pocket he pulls out a folded up piece of paper and starts looking down the list and he says uh 425 and i said if you don't mind me asking because now i'm thinking well okay uh if you really needed one i guess 425 might be a good starting point but not me I'm not going to be there. I'm not a player at even 400 on those. So I said to him, well, if you don't mind me asking, where did you arrive upon that price? And then he told me he already had a machinery dealer come out there and look at everything he's got in the place and basically told him, I guess, what uh, what he should be asking for this stuff. And I said, well, okay, so 425 is what this machinery dealer told you he's going to most likely try and sell them for. Uh, or what he would expect to get for him retail, I said. But that doesn't that that doesn't mean that's what he's paying you. And this guy, I guess, figured well because the guy was going to take everything that he's looking for. This guy to come and just take everything lock lock stock and barrels. So I could see we were going to be too far apart. So I just I got off that subject and I picked around at some other stuff. I looked at a couple other items. I found a uh, little one inch belt sander. Um, the kind that has the, uh, he actually had two of them. Uh, well, anyways, I digress. He couldn't, he, he didn't have a price on that because the machinery dealer didn't see those. <laughs> so he says, well, if you want to give me a price, I can check back with you. And I'm thinking now, whatever price I give him, he's just going to go to the next guy and say, you know, give me more than that. And it's yours. So I don't play that game. But I happened to see a drill chuck. I uh, forgot what kind it was. And I said to him, I said, you don't have any large chucks, do you? And he says, well, I might have, might, might have one downstairs. And I'm thinking, oh, downstairs. So I said, well, as long as I'm here, can I take a look downstairs? He says, sure. So we go down around the back of the shop in the lower level. He's got th these big garage bays there you can drive right into. Obviously, they've been doing truck and tractor work for years. And there was a lot of nice cabinets in there, metal cabinets. There was some Lista um, cabinets. All of that stuff was in there. A lot of the stuff he bought government surplus years ago. 
problem was they were all loaded with stuff. He didn't want to sell any cabinets because they were loaded with stuff and he would only sell them with the contents. And I've done that dance before with people. And it just, you, you can't, you can't deal. You can't deal in that kind of a situation. So finally he goes and he finds the chuck that he was thinking of. <laughs> you know, I was looking for a Jacob's ball bearing chuck, a big one. Um... I think I was looking for a 21N, I think it's called. Or is it a 20N? I forget the number. Because I think I've got the 18. And then there's one that's got a 1-inch capacity. And that's the one that I don't have. I was thinking it would be nice to have that for the tailstock on the Vernon. So he found this thing. And it's kind of stuck. And it's dirty as hell. And it's got some rust on it. And I couldn't even make out who the hell made it. So then he gave me a uh, wire brush so I could kind of rub it and see if I could figure out who makes this thing. And initially I could only make out a number. And I could see the words right here, made in Germany. So when I saw that it was made in Germany, I figured, well, it's probably decent quality. But because of the condition it's in and everything, I said, well... So, you know, knowing that he didn't like any of my prices, and he knows that I didn't like any of his prices, I said, yeah, you know, I got, I got a number in mind for this, but you're not going to like it. And he said, yeah, you're probably right. And I said, well, we talked a little bit more, and then finally I said, well, you take 20 bucks for this chuck. And he's like, oh. He says, you and I both know at $30 you're getting a steal. And then I said, well, I said, you know, he said, it needs a lot of work. I don't even know how good of a chuck it's going to be if I clean it up. So, so split the difference with you, 25. And then he kind of jokingly said, are you sure you're not my brother? <laughs> so I don't know what that meant, but I guess maybe his brother is kind of a wheeler dealer too. Well, it's got a Morse taper on it. Um, and it's a big chuck. You can see next to my fist. It's good size. Not sure what the capacity is. But I went online before I even cleaned this up any further. I went online and I was like curious. Well, I know it's not an Albrecht chuck. So I was like, well, what other chucks were made in Germany? Well, it turns out there's a chuck company from Germany that I think is pronounced like Rome. I think it's R-O-H-M. And it turns out that they're actually an inexpensive German-made chuck. So I got a feeling this might be what this is. So unfortunately, I don't think this is that great of a chuck. Looks like that's exactly what this is. This is a Rome R-O-H-M chuck made in Germany. It's uh, a 5-26 Rome extra. And it looks like capacity is 3 sixteenths to 1 and 1 30 seconds. DIN 6349 made in Germany. So that's interesting. Well, it looks like I ID'd it. It's the uh, number 72834. Key type drill chuck, Prima, size 26, mount B24, clamping capacity 5-26, heavy industrial version. Uh, because I, I sorted their chucks on their website by uh, size, and the ones that have clamping capacity up to an inch and a 32nd, which is what this one says it has, they have this one, but you'll notice this one has a smooth band, a knurled band, smooth band. And then they have this one, which is knurled, smooth, knurled, which is more like the design of this one here. And I think, so I think that's going to be the one. And then there's, let's see what's on the next page. So I think that's it. Well, I just did a quick search on eBay and online, and I can't find anything that conclusively tells me it's the same chuck as this one because I find some similarities and then I'll see something that looks a little bit different. I also keep finding the ball bearing version of this chuck, which I don't think this is the ball bearing one. I think the ball bearing one is a more expensive chuck. Um, so I have no idea what the value of this chuck is. Uh, but if I can clean it up and it's a good serviceable chuck, then I guess I don't really care about the value so much as whether or not it'll just run true. So I'm not even going to bother working on cleaning this up and rehabbing it right now. i got other things that I'm busy with. 
So for the time being, I guess I'll just put this in Chuckville. Uh, let's see. Also, this is currently my largest chuck, this Jacobs. This is a Jacobs ball bearing. This is a nice chuck. Uh, and this is uh, it's a ball bearing super chuck, they call it. This is a number 18N. And I think the next size up from this is a number 20N, which is full one inch capacity, I believe. So, this is another one. I got, an, I got two 18Ns. This one's got a more taper on it. That one's got just a straight shank. So this is going to be my biggest chuck now, drill chuck. It doesn't actually look like it's that much bigger than the uh, 18N, really. But it's inch and one thirty seconds max capacity, so it definitely is. That's a lot of chucks. Mm. This Gorilla Glue is just too old. Doesn't even want to flow anymore. It's got the consistency of molasses even after I added a little heat to it. Still great for sticking the fingers though. <sighs> train wreck alright so that was a miserable fail I know what to do now mm -hmm.